Before this video gets started, Drop did send this out for a review. They're not paying, asking, or otherwise trying to influence my review in any way. All thoughts and opinions are my own. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh, and today we're gonna to be talking about the new Drop Heifman headphone, the HE5XX. So this headphone is coming in at $220. And my personal take on this headphone is pretty simple. I think this is gonna be a polarizing headphone. I think that there's gonna be a lot of people who don't like this headphone and a lot of people who do, but I think it's definitely gonna be a split. So I'll give you the quick and dirty review of this. Uh, this headphone is very lightweight. So if you like planars and you like a very lightweight headphone, this is gonna be it. They say 370 grams on the website and that's what I'm being told right now. The Sundara is also 370 grams. But this is noticeably lighter than that headphone, so I don't think the, the weight is exactly accurate yet. Uh, the sound signature coming out of this is very focused on a very crispy, clean sound with a lot of space. So you get a lot of sound stage. It's not a very intimate headphone at all. And uh, also one of the traits about this that I think is going to be one of the more polarizing things is the delivery of the dynamics. Uh, this is a relatively flat, headphone when it comes to the dynamics. It kind of reminds me of some old school studio monitors that have a very kind of flat delivery where you kind of hear everything, but it's not very spread apart in terms of dynamic range. That's kind of what this headphone sounds like to me a little bit. I think that this is a big departure from things that they've done in the past, which is kind of cool to see a new headphone. Uh, for me, it's not my personal favorite for actual sound quality, but I think for the right person, this is actually gonna be exactly what they're looking for at the price range. There's not too many headphones that have this type of sound signature. So I'm glad to see something different. So the build of this guy is very similar to what we're seeing with a lot of uh, lower end Heifman headphones right now, which is sort of a Frankenstein design of a few different inspirations from a few different headphones. So for this one, you see a Diva style ear cup with what looks like a Diva style yoke going into a sort of similar to the 4XX style of headband. Now this headphone overall is quite a bit lighter. And one of the things that they did to make this headphone lighter is that they actually reduced the size of the magnets. So they're working with thinner magnets now. Now one of the flip sides of this, and I'm not sure if it's because of the yoke and the headband style, or if it's just because the planar is getting to that point of lightness where it doesn't feel particularly well built. It doesn't feel bad. It just doesn't really inspire confidence like even the 4XX does. That feels like a very dense headphone this does not have that feeling. And I would actually describe the 4XX as a more solid build and probably better built than this is. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my least favorite part of this headphone, which is going to be the trouble response. It's very clear that they're going for a more sterile, kind of really crispy, really clean delivery with the trouble response for this headphone, for this version, and not so much a darker trouble response like on the 4XX. But I think they missed the mark a little bit. And I think the big reason why they missed the mark is because they don't have the resolution in this headphone to match the forwardness and the attempt at clarity. So this is a very trouble forward headphone and you're gonna have a lot of peakiness in some of the trouble regions. And for me, this is a bit unpleasant. Uh, I listen to a wide range of music. One of the music genres that I listen to a lot is R&B and R&B uses a lot of hi-hats and hi-hats specifically are a bit of kind of a, like a, a problem with this headphone and they're not particularly pleasing. Uh, that being said, most of the trouble response is relatively okay, though all of it as an entire category is relatively forward. This type of trouble is not my particular preference, though some people enjoy it. It's not really for me. I much prefer something like the 6XX's trouble or even the 4XX's trouble over this example. Okay, so mid-range is where uh, things start to get a little bit better for me and I do start to like it for certain songs, um, but it does have a weird delivery style, which is going to be the open staged environment that th this whole headphone has. Uh, this is never going to be a intimate headphone in the way that a 6XX is gonna be, where the vocalist is big and internal inside your head. This doesn't have that at all. It always has a staged performance, kind of a far out there performance. This is really great for some music, like honestly, really exceptional, especially music that was recorded uh, perhaps a little bit too close to the headphone. So they're taking some of the intensity and the heat of those vocalists and kind of staging them back and separating them a little bit further from being so close and too personal. The downside of this is it's a sort of negative effect for music that might have been 
recorded a little bit too far away to where now it seems really far away and kind of thin. Male vocalists are great. Female vocalists, I think, are okay. Uh, timbre characteristics are relatively fine at this price range. I'm not going to complain about it nor give it super high praise. Now, the bass response of this headphone is, again, going in line with that very clean, very staged sort of bass response. So it's not a lot. And I would simply put it like this. If you're into bass response or really intimate vocals, I would go with the 4XX. Or if you're just into vocals and you want something more mid-range focused, go with the 6XX. If you want something more trouble forward and not as mid-range and not as bass focused, I would go with the 5XX. I think it is competitive with all three of those, even though they're all coming in at slightly different prices. But I think for my type of listening, for what I like to listen to on my headphones, this isn't going to be for me personally. Okay, now the imaging and the soundstage are actually probably class leading. I don't necessarily think that they're the best because of the lack of dexterity of being able to be inside your head and really intimate um, and also wide out. This is always stuck in that wide out, but impressive nonetheless. Um, one of the headphones that does actually compete with this and I think beats it out for imaging and soundstage capability is going to be the PC 38X, which is actually a gaming headphone also from Drop. I think the vocal intimacy of that headphone, but still having the wide soundstage is legitimately class leading, but this isn't far behind and it is a little bit wider. And I do think one of the big benefits of this is the wide ranging variation of angles that sounds can come at. So it's not stuck with, you know, just a few different, like it can be in front or on the sides. It's actually got quite a large field at which it can come from. That is one of the big compliments I do have to give the 5XX. It's actually very good with that. Okay, so a more direct comparison for me versus the 6XX here. I think that these are very comparable products, but for two completely different people, and they're almost polar opposite headphones. The 6XX runs a masterclass for mid-range over the 5XX. If you like vocals, if you listen to a lot of vocal-based music or like a personal listening experience where it's very internal, that headphone is definitely gonna be your cup of tea and I would stay away from the 5XX. If you listen to a lot of soundstage music, a lot of big orchestral music or things you know that sound really far out and that's your cup of tea, I think the 5XX is gonna be the way to go. Now for me, the trouble response actually goes back and forth between these two. The 6XX is a little bit less forward, but also not quite always as clear as I would like it. And the 5XX is a little bit more forward, but also not as clear as I would like it to be. And so neither have perfect trouble response for the price category. And I would determine that the 560S actually has better trouble resolution and capability than both of these headphones. So both of them are kind of just okay for me for trouble response. Sub bass response for both of these headphones is just okay. I would say that the five is actually a little bit stronger than the six XXs, but it's not by much and neither I would consider to be the ideal headphone for bass heads. Okay, so my conclusion for this, I think that this is a, in a triad of kind of sound signatures that Heifman currently offers. They have the V-shape sound signature of the 4XX, the mid-range focus sound signature of the 6XX, and then kind of the overly emphasized top end sound signature of the 5XX. I think this is sort of a weak contender between those two. I would personally pick either of those two over this headphone, but I would totally understand why somebody might prefer this headphone. So just to sum it up in a couple sentences, if you like wide, crispy sound, this is gonna be your thing. If you like a warmer, more personal sound, 4XX, 560S, or 6XX. Okay guys, I think that's gonna be it. Thank you very much for watching. Till the next video, my name is Josh, signing off.